I played Pokemon White 2, and if I can't kill my opponent's Pokemon in 60 seconds, I explode. I'll be playing this challenge as a hardcore Nuzlocke, so any self-destructing death is permanent. Let's jump in. Welcome to Unova, where we waste no time in getting our first Pokemon. I go with Tepig, and I name him Hunt. Let me know in the comments when you figure out the nickname theme. I'll be impressed if you can get it in the first 10 nicknames. Also, make sure you're subscribed for more explosive content. Here's exactly how this is going to work. When I begin a battle with another trainer, I start a timer for 60 seconds as soon as the menu pops up. If this Pokemon is on screen when this timer hits 0 seconds, I need to use the move Self-Destruct. If my Pokemon dies, it's permanently dead and can't be used again. Additionally, after the timer hits 30 seconds, I can't switch my Pokemon. This prevents me from switching into a bad Pokemon last second and taking the explosion instead of my good Pokemon. With about 20 seconds to spare, we win the first rival fight. Following normal Nuzlocke rules, I can only catch the first Pokemon I find in each route. On Route 19, I find a Pat Rat. As a note, the timer doesn't apply for wild Pokemon fights, only trainer battles. I catch Pat Rat and name it Neo. And then I catch a Sea Waddle named Mills and a Lillipup named Durden. I make it through the first few battles with no issues. But now it's time to take on the first gym leader, Charon. Hardcore Nuzlocke rules dictate that I can't use items in battle and I must play on set mode. Also, I must stay at or below the level cap until the next gym leader fight. I'm also playing White 2's challenge mode, making the important battles significantly harder. Let's start the clock. Seawaddle is great here as it knows a 60 base power stab move this early on. I get a crit, but it's not strong enough to kill Charon's Pat Rat. Seawaddle also has a lot of defensive bulk, perfect for Charon's physical team. In a challenge where I have a ticking clock, having my opponent heal is catastrophic. But thankfully, Charon only uses regular potions, and I can immediately get Pat Rat to low health. With the timer under 30 seconds, I'm now locked in, but I can take out Pat Rat with one more bug bite. With plenty of time to spare, Charon's first Pokemon is defeated. Next, Charon sends out his best Pokemon, Lillipup. Lillipup is faster than me and uses workup, but another advantage of Bug Bite is I can eat my opponent's berries and gain their effect. Now that I'm at full health, I can safely take a boosted tackle, and I'm completely safe to another one. Another Bug Bite gets Lillipup to low health, and since Charon used his potion, I can take out Lillipup in under 60 seconds. Finally, we have Pidove. Because of its flying type, Bug Bite is not very effective here. So as quickly as possible, I switch to Hunt, and Pidove goes for Workup. Ember does way less damage than I was expecting, and another Workup puts Pidove into scary territory. Now I'm under 30 seconds, so Hunt has to take it from here. On the next Ember, I get the 10% burn chance, cutting Pidove's attack, which is now at plus 2. With about 15 seconds, this is probably the last turn. Hunt survives Pidove's quick attack, though, but Ember can't kill, and as the clock ticks down under 10 seconds, the burn kills Pidove, and we barely take it out in time. Without the burn, we almost certainly would have lost Tepig here. However, we make it through Charon without anyone going boom. This is a hard challenge, but it's made even more difficult because of double battles. Not only do I have two Pokemon I now need to kill in one minute, but the turns last so much longer giving me less turns to kill the Pokemon. This battle with the Sun Kerns is easy, but there are many harder double battles later in the game. I catch a coughing in the Verbank complex, naming it Connor, and evolve Hunt and Durden before taking on the second gym leader, Roxy. On your mark, get set, go. The timer makes setup strats harder, but not impossible. Against coughing, I set up with Durden, increasing its attack and special attack by one stage. Even without Intimidate, Hurtier is a decently bulky Pokemon. I use Workup for a second time, aiming to get my already high attack to plus two. I once again tank the Venishock, and with plenty of time, kill the Coughing with Return, which I taught to Durden through TM, and then increased his happiness by running around. 
Durden can outspeed the rest of Roxy's team, end up plus two attack, takes out the Grimer, and Whirlipede. We get the second badge with no major time crunches. I help to take out the team dedicated to my fourth favorite state of matter, and then sail over to Castilia City. There's a few things in these games that make me feel uncomfortable, but getting flashed has got to be up there. I get a few more encounters in the surrounding areas, including a Rattata named Murtaw, a Zubat named Solo, a Timber named Balboa, and a Sandile named Rakatansky. Did you figure out the nickname theme yet? If you did, let me know in the comments. Time to take on Berg. Ready or not, here I come. Dwebble knows Rock, Bug, and Dark moves, which are all not very effective against fighting types. Wake Up Slap will be a three hit KO. So to avoid heal range, I go for a lower damage attack. But I forgot that in challenge mode, Dwebble holds a Citrus Berry. And now Wake Up Slap puts Dwebble into heal range. I don't know how many potions Berg has, but I need to just go for Wake Up Slaps. Thankfully, Berg only has one. And with a few seconds left, I take out Dwebble. Carablast comes out next, so I immediately switch into Solo. Leftovers is obviously a great item, but it does take up precious seconds every turn. Wing Attack won't quite kill here, so I go for a bite first and actually get the flinch. Now Wing Attack can take out Carablast in under half the allotted time. Third, Berg sends out Leveny. I have Pig Knight ready to go if Leveny puts me to sleep, but it misses Grass Whistle and I can take it out with one Wing Attack. Finally, we have Shelmet. Wing Attack will be a two hit KO. Safe to all of Shelmet's moves, Solo can quickly take it out. Solo couldn't quite solo the fight, but we're through three badges with zero explosions. There's a required fight against Colrus after this, whose Magnemite did significant damage to Hunt. When Clink comes out, Hunt gets fully paralyzed and I need to switch. I go to Rakatansky, but his only ground move is Mud Slap. Gear Grind is doing a lot of damage, but being under 30 seconds, I now can't switch out. With time running out, my only play is to lower Clink's accuracy and pray that Gear Grind misses. Not only is Gear Grind strong, but the animation takes forever, but Clink keeps missing. And clicking A as fast as I can, one final Mud Slap knocks out Clink with two seconds on the clock. If any of those gear grinds had hit, Rakatansky would have to explode. But by the skin of our teeth, we make it through. In the desert resort, I catch a Darumaka named Rambo. And in the Relic Castle, I catch a Sandshrew named Atreides. In Nimbasa City, the subway bosses are normally a super easy fight. But not only do I have my double battle problem, I'm now at will to my allies' decisions. An early miss from Servine causes us to kill Boldor too slowly. And in the critical final seconds, my ally uses Leech Seed, while Flame Charge leaves Girder with a sliver of health. The clock hits zero. And finally, it's time. Cause we gon' rock this club. We gon' go all night. We gon' light it up like it's dynamite. Cause I told you once and I told you twice. We gon' light it up like it's dynamite. On Route 5, I catch a Solosis named Croft. And on Route 16, I catch a Trubbish named Ryan. Now it's time to take on the fourth gym leader, Elisa. Ready, steady, go. Sandslash is a ground type, so Emolga can't use Volt Switch. Aerial Ace does nothing to him. And I use Return since I can't hit Emolga with ground moves. Even with the Citrus Berry, Return should be a two hit KO. So after tanking another Aerial Ace, Atreides can take out Emolga. Next out is Joltik, and this is where my plan had a major flaw. I switch into Rambo, which is fine, but because I'm so used to using ground Pokemon, I didn't play around the fact that Joltik would Volt Switch out. The tight timer means that when things don't go according to plan, I have to think on my feet and act quickly. Thankfully, Fire Punch will still be a two hit KO, and I can take out Flaffy with a few more Fire Punches. I do get the static proc though. Joltik comes back out, and I let it Volt Switch again to get a Fire Punch on Zebstrika. I try to switch out, but Zebstrika uses Pursuit, which thankfully doesn't crit. I go to Atreides, who can take out Zebstrika with one dig, but Zebstrika is faster, and its stomp flinches me. I'm still safe to a crit, so I stay in, and it flinches me again. I'm still safe to a crit, so I stay in, and it flinches me for a third straight time. Now it's under 30 seconds, so I can't switch. Stomp doesn't crit, and I'm finally able to use Dig. 
Despite the flinch hacks, Atreides is able to take out Zebstrika. Finally, Elisa just has her pesky Joltik remaining. It's using a random move, so I switch into Rakatansky, and of course, it uses the worst possible move. I'm in crit range, so I need to switch, and with the clock ticking down to 30 seconds, I make a spur-of-the-moment decision to go to my backup backup plan, Durden the Stoutland. Durden takes the energy ball, and Leftovers takes up a few precious seconds. Durden is faster, and Return knocks out Joltik, giving us the fourth gym badge. The timer makes improvisation a key skill in this challenge. To get to Driftvale, you need to fight old Charlie, and in White 2, that means a triple battle. Full disclosure, I'm not using the timer for triple battles. Double battles are hard enough, but the other Nuzlocke rules still apply. I defeat him though, and on the drawbridge, get my guaranteed ducklet encounter, naming it Riddick. I also get the gift Zerua in Driftvale. Swana is such a great counter to the fifth gym leader, Clay. Duck, duck, goose. Swana's special attacks ignore the intimidate and outspeed Crocorock, and Water Pulse is enough to take it out in one hit. Next out is Onyx, whose sturdy ability will give it a chance to retaliate, and Rock Slide is not a move that Riddick wants to deal with. So as quickly as possible, I switch into Atreides, as Onyx raises its speed. With its high defense and type advantage, Sand Slash is a great counter to Onyx, tanking its moves with ease. I figure I have time, so I get Onyx down to heal range, wasting one of Clay's potions. I get it down to 1 HP again, and Onyx goes for explosion, and even that move barely makes a dent. A bit tight there, but we do get the kill in under a minute. Sand Slash comes in next, and I get a free switch back to Riddick on the incoming Bulldoze. Riddick outspeeds and takes out Sand Slash with one Water Pulse. Last, Clay sends out his terrifying Excadrill. I immediately switch to Balboa, who's holding an Eviolite, allowing him to tank Excadrill's moves. Excadrill doesn't get a crit with Metal Claw, and Wake Up Slap will be a two-hit KO even after Citrus Berry. I'm completely safe to Excadrill, even though it crits me, and with plenty of time, I can take it out, getting the fifth gym badge. In the Mistralton Cave, I catch a Bulldore named Jones, and in the Chargestone Cave, I catch a Joltik named Parker. After making it through to Mistralton City, I encountered a Zebstrika on Route 7. Zebstrika did not want to get captured, and as I shuffled my team around to deal with it, Neo got hit by Pursuit as I tried to switch her out. I ended up catching Zebstrika with my Master Ball, which is kinda stupid, but I will happily take a Zebstrika for Watchog trade. Bond the Zebstrika is important because the Flying Gym is next. Bond is faster here, and he's holding a magnet, so he'll always get a kill on Swoobat. Next, Skyla decides to send out her Pokemon that's four times weak to Electric, so Bond handily takes it out with Spark. Third, we get Siglyph, who Bond can't one-hit KO, so I switch to Zoroark, who's disguised as the last Pokemon in my party, which I've intentionally made wheezing. Zoroark isn't affected by the Psychic, and is super fast, but can't knock out Siglyph. Siglyph hits a Hypnosis, but I had prepared for that by equipping Zoroark with a Chesto Berry. Skyla heals up, and after two Night Slashes, I can take out Siglyph. And because I executed everything so quickly, I have plenty of time. Fourth, we get Skarmory, so I switch into Rambo, who takes a Steel Wing with ease. Fire Punch would kill if not for Sturdy, but I know that Rambo is still safe to all of Skarmory's moves. One more Fire Punch, and Skyla is defeated. Things with my self-destructing Pokemon are going surprisingly well, so it's about time that I make some mistakes. I catch a Litwick named Wick in the Celestial Tower, but then I accidentally run from my Banette encounter, and in Reversal Mountain, I'm repelling to get a guaranteed Excadrill encounter, but I accidentally run into Shaking Grass and get Audino instead. As Bianca and I go through Reversal Mountain, I actually find a shiny Bulldore. What a cool shiny. Can you guess what happens next? Thanks, Bianca. This is why you're not a gym leader. But Bianca's reign of terror isn't over yet, because she still needs to help me in double battles against ace trainers. We're down to the wire in the final double battle, and I'm able to knock out Driftblim with a fire punch. But rather than go for a fighting move, Bianca uses acrobatics, while Camerupt uses the move with the longest possible animation. With eight seconds left, the best I can do is fire punch, and Bianca uses acrobatics and... Time. That is barely under one minute. I think I know who the real villain of this game is. I reach Undela Town and get a few more encounters, including McLean the Staryu, 
Ridley the Mantike, and Ryback the Swablu. In a double battle against Zinzolin and a Plasma Grunt, I get Crit from Slash and a Poison Proc from Sludge Bomb. After some animations take up too much time, I'm under 30 seconds and can't switch out. But thankfully, my Fire Punch kills, and I don't have to rely on any RNG going my way. I make it to Opelucid City, and on Route 9, catch a Pawniard named O'Connor, as well as a Roselia named Blade. The next gym leader is Drayden, whose dragon Pokemon are very strong. This includes the very tanky Dredigan. Three, two, one, go. Planning for this fight, I realized there was no consistent way to kill Dredigan. Ryback can at least two hit KO, even after the Citrus Berry, but she has to risk a crit from Dredigan's Rock Slide. Rock Slide knocks her health way down, but doesn't crit. Now I can safely take out Dredigan with a second Dragon Pulse. Drayden sends out his own Altaria next. Although my level advantage probably makes me faster, Dragon Pulse will never one hit KO Altaria. I'm expecting a Dragon Pulse from him though, so I switch into my only Pokemon that resists Dragon, and Dragon Pulse does a negligible amount of damage. This pivot allows me to switch into McLean, whose held item Bright Powder helps to avoid the incoming Sing. Starmie is fast and thankfully hits a Blizzard, which is times four effective against Altaria. Pivoting is a great strategy, but it does take up a ton of time. Drayden sends out another Pokemon that's double weak to ice, and McLean hits another Blizzard, easily taking out Flygon. Finally, we have Haxorus, and McLean lands a third straight Blizzard to outspeed and one-hit KO Haxorus. Even with the timer, that may have been my cleanest and luckiest Drayden fight. There's some plasma shenanigans going on right now, but I'm focused on getting the eighth and final gym badge. Lights, camera, action. Waylord is a big bulky boy, so a super effective Giga Drain doesn't quite kill. Rain is now up and Marlin heals. I let Waylord attack me, and thanks to Eviolite, Blade can survive the hit. Waylord dies to Toxic Poison, and Mantine comes out next. Because Blade is at lower health, I figure it will either go for Air Slash or Ice Beam, so I switch in Bond, but it goes for Confuse Ray. Definitely not what I was expecting. I have to just power through though, but in the rain, Scald does a lot of damage, and I get burned. However, I don't hit myself in confusion, and since Mantine is four times weak to electric, even the attack reduction from burn can't stop me from one hit KOing. Bond hangs on from the burn, and Caracosta comes out next. Caracosta will be using a random move, so I switch to Jones, who can survive any attack thanks to its sturdy ability. This also tries to bait a water move as I switch into Mills. Caracosta falls for the bait. Leaf Blade does a lot of damage, but triggers Caracosta sturdy as it raises its offense and speed. A plus one Caracosta can't outspeed Levani though, and I take it out with a few seconds to spare. Marlin using that Hyper Potion on Waylord was really clutch. Finally, we have Jellicent, who Mills can outspeed and one hit KO with Leaf Blade. That concludes a gauntlet with zero deaths to gym leaders. I have to deal with Team Plasma now, and against Colrus, I get into a sticky situation. I'm trying to figure out what to do with Wick, but my indecision takes the timer under 30 seconds, so I'm forced to keep him in to die. I win the fight with no other deaths though, but now I need to take on Getsus, but I actually get by without any close calls. Though the same can't be said against the challenging gauntlet of trainers in Victory Road. In an ace trainer double battle, Atreides and Rambo ran out of time to knock out my opposing heat more. You know what that means. Cause we gon' rock this club. Bam. We gon' go all night. Bam. We gon' light bam. it up. Bam. Like it's dynamite. Bam. Cause I told you bam. once. Bam. And I told bam. you bam. twice. Bam. We gon' light bam. it up. Bam. Like it's dynamite. I safely make it through the rest of Victory Road. And now I'm at the Pokemon League. Having a tight timer against Pokemon with competitive move sets and items, I need to plan well, act quickly, and think on my feet. So I thought it'd be fun to record my real-time reactions to these fights. And trust me, you do not want to miss what happens next. So first we'll be taking on Caitlyn. I have the most consistent strategy against her. This strategy is very reliant on doing a lot the first turn. So if we can get through the first turn, uh, we should be good on time at least. So let's start. 
All right. She sends out Masharna. I send out Girder. And go. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is taunt. So this is going to prevent Masharna from using uh, Hypnosis or Reflect. So, yep, can't use, can't use Hypnosis. So now we're going to use Nasty Plot. This is going to raise our special attack by two stages. Um, and all Masharna can do is Charge Beam, uh, which will do, like, yeah, about 25%. So uh, it also wears off the Illusion, but we have uh, Leftovers. We're going to do Nasty Plot one more time. Uh, we're about halfway done with time, um, so we're, we're doing okay. Now we're up to plus four special attack. Um, charge beam hits again, and we're uh, pretty good on health. Uh, coming down to the wire on time, but this should be the last turn. Taunt wears off, doesn't matter. We're using Dark Pulse. This should kill Masharna. Just hurry up, hurry up, Bar. Get off the screen, and with about five seconds left, uh, we are successful. So next, uh, we'll start that, and we'll go, and we're just going to Dark Pulse again. Zoroark is really fast, so it's going to outspeed basically everything. So with plenty of time, um, we get another kill. All right. Metagross, this is the reason why we needed to get up to um, plus four special attack. Even with a plus special defense nature, uh, we get the kill. Another Dark Pulse. This is doing like extra, extra damage at this point. And go. And one final Dark Pulse. And with uh, lots of time to spare, we take out Caitlyn. So next, we'll be taking on Chantal using a similar strategy. All right, here we go. And go. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to taunt. This will prevent um, Kofagrigus from using Will-O-Wisp. It doesn't, but it does use Psychic, which, of course, doesn't work. Um, now we're going to use Nasty Plot once. Uh, we don't need to do it a second time. Just once will work. Let's see if it goes for Psychic again. It does, so it's the uh, AI is completely tricked. Uh, it thinks that um, Girder is here and it won't uh, change its uh, strategy here. So we can just use Dark Pulse um, and um, we will easily knock it out. So we gave the experience share to a different Pokemon so that it can learn Swords Dance, which we will be learning. And we can just Dark Pulse again. Easily get the kill there. All right, Chandelure, I hope I outspeed this thing. Uh, let's see. Okay, I do. Um, even if I didn't, it would probably still use Psychic, so I think I'd be okay, but we're, we're good there. Also good here. So this can uh, be used as a um, learning experience. You get a Zoroark for free in Black and White 2, and if you have a fighting Pokemon, or um, something that you can use as bait, you can just sit there with Zorark, even in challenge mode, and just set up and sweep these first two fights completely free. There's no risk here. So use that to your advantage. So this is where the battles get a little trickier. Um, we're gonna be taking on Marshall next. Once again, we have a lot to do on the first turn. Um, but it's not quite uh, as sweepy as the other fights are. My biggest problem is Lucario, um, but I think I have a way to deal with the Lucario. All right. And go. All right. So first we're going to set up a Stealth Rock. Um, this will never kill us. Um, we have Sturdy even if it did. Um, going to damage a bit with Rocky Helmet, and now we get Pointed Stones up. Um, so now that that's the case, uh, we are dead, but we're not going to stay in anyway. We are going to switch to Croft. Okay, let's move things a bit faster here. Storm Throw is great. That won't do much. Okay. Uh, now, hurry up, hurry up. Let's go with Trick Room. This is going to make us uh, faster than everybody because Croft uh, Reuniclus is a very slow Pokemon. So we're going to be uh, faster now. Running out of time here. Let's click Psychic, and hopefully we can kill fast enough. 
Come on, bar. And we kill. Okay, great. That was a little close there. Okay, Lucario is out a little earlier than I expected. So um, we may have to stall a bit here. So Light Screen is going to prevent its attacks from doing too much damage to us. Shadow Ball is pretty damaging, but we should be able to take one more. Um, Psychic might kill. Um, it's a range two. Okay, it doesn't. It's gonna Calm Mind, okay. This is actually good because I'd like to use up um, Trick Room turns. So let's click Psychic again. Okay, uh, this is probably good. Does Trick Room run out? Okay, it does. Um, we should be good. I just gotta hurry, 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 hurry. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It la- <laughs> Go, 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 go. Holy crap, holy crap. Oh my god. That was so close. Wow. Okay, we should be, um, we should just be able to kill now, I'm pretty sure. Um, we're faster, we have like enough turns of trick room. Okay, there we go. Okay, as long as trick room doesn't run out, which I don't think it will. I did not realize it was that close. I was a bad roll away from losing. Wow. All right, this last fight against Grimsley is, uh, it involves a lot of switching and kind of like playing things by ear. So uh, that's why it's last. All right, Grimsley baby, let's do this. All right, I send out Bisharp, let's go. All right, so um, I'm going to start by using uh, Swords Dance, but it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna get faked out. Still doesn't do a lot, even with the normal gem, um, but I have leftovers to recover. We're gonna do Swords Dance again. Um, we are slower, doesn't matter. Uh, Lyper can't do anything to us. Um, I don't even need to be uh, this high. Um, in attack, but I have time, so um, I figure I might as well. All right, there's the second sword stance. Let's hurry up. Should be okay. We'll be a little tight on time. We are going second. Hurry up, leftovers. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and we will iron head. Okay, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh my god, this is so close. Get off screen. Woo! Okay, that was really close. Oh, great! Scrafty is out next. Okay, so this is exactly why we went to. Um, this is exactly why we went to uh, plus six, just in case it went Scrafty. Um, so we can just click Iron Head, uh, and at plus six, this will kill. I wasn't sure if Scrafty or Crocodile would come out. Um, I assume Crocodile will come out next. Okay, yep, Crocodile comes out next. Okay, uh, Intimidate, um, that's fine. You can raise my attack back up, doesn't matter. I am leaving. Um, I can kill Crocodile, but um, he's faster and can kill me, so I switch into a flying Pokemon because he's going to use Earthquake, yep. And um, then I am going to switch into Girder, uh, who has an Eviolite and can uh, take this attack no problem. Um, okay, Dragon Claw should be fine. Okay, uh, it was a crit. That's okay. We're actually going to Drain Punch once. Uh, it won't kill, but... All right, no crit there. That was good. So we're going to Drain Punch, get a little bit of HP back. Ooh, okay. Um, we're running out of time here, so uh, I think... Go ahead and Super Power here. Super Power will kill. Let's hurry up. Time. Okay, we should be fine. Oh, but it does do the lowering and minusing. All right, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And you are off screen with three seconds left. Woo, okay, that was really close. And we got some health back, which is really important. Um, so Absol, Absol should see a uh, kill with Psycho Cut. So that will allow us to go back to Bisharp. Um, I hope it uses Psycho Cut, I really do. Um, it uses Swords Dance. Okay, that is... Fine. 
Oh, it just keeps using sword stance, huh? Okay, and then we will low kick. Okay. And we have Bisharp. Go. And uh, we should have enough um, health to switch back to Balboa here. Okay, goes for X Scissor. That's great. Oh, he's faster. Anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Let me knock out Bisharp. And with plenty of time, we beat Grimsley. Oh, man. We had some close ones there. Oh, man. All right. Let's do this. Hey, Iris. What's up? All right. We got a lot to do on this first turn, so let's get it going. Let's get it going. And go. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to light screen. So we'll prevent a lot of its moves uh, from doing a lot of damage. Good, that was a really important uh, not crit. Next, we're gonna trick room, so then we'll be faster. Okay, good there. Now we're doing trick room. Okay, now we're gonna switch. We're gonna go down to girder. Okay, we're above 30 seconds, so we can still switch. Okay, we got the light screen going. Awesome. First, we're gonna drain punch, get some HP back. Okay, ooh, that did a lot. That did way more than I was expecting. Okay. Oh, getting a little. Oh. That was unfortunate. Okay, um, I have another plan. Let's see if this works. All right, let's do this. So she'll heal. I'll use Dragon Pulse. Hope Trick Room does not end this turn because I am slower. And this will be a two hit KO, I think. Yep. Light sc okay, good, Light Screen wore off. Now Dragon Pulse, I'm faster. Okay, good, good, that worked. Okay, great. Okay, Trick Room is done. Next is Lapras. Okay, um, let's see. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to, oh, I was gonna switch to Girder, but he's dead. Um, well, I've got an ice move coming in. Um, let's go to Zoroark. Okay, good miss, good miss. All right, let's um, Dark Pulse. Maybe a two hit KO here. Nope, but I got the flinch. Let's keep going. Oh my God, get the flinch again. That would be crazy. No way, no way, dude, no way. Oh my God, I cannot believe that happened. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, now it's dread again. Um, okay, so it's gonna go for outrage. Um, I think I'm okay sacking this here. Let me make sure, I have a little bit of time. Yeah, let's just get do some damage. I cannot believe miss into flinch flinch, that's crazy. Okay, now it's locked into outrage. Okay, thanks Zorark, appreciate it buddy. So, we should just be able to go into Altaria, who's faster, and kill. Okay, all right, who's coming out? Agron, okay. So normally we would go to uh, Girder, but we could also go to um, Bisharp. I think we just sack this thing here because it can't, it doesn't, well, for Haxorus it might be good. I think we sack. So we'll send Bisharp out and then low kick should kill. Yep, easy. Haxorus next. Okay, so if we can trick this guy into using, yep, or yeah, Earthquake, yeah, 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 and then it'll use Outrage, which will 
probably kill this thing, but then it's locked into Outrage. Bisharp can take. Let's run the clock. Okay, so we would just want to sword stance once. Yeah, let's sword stance once. Okay, this should be okay. No crit. Good. Nice. This is good. Hit yourself. No. It was bad for him to get out of outrage. I think we lost. Please iron defense. Hit yourself. Okay. I don't know. Maybe Boulder can pull us off. I don't really doubt it though. See a stone edge now. Hit yourself again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Avoided the attack. Okay. Oh my God. Stop avoiding the attack. Well, I'm going to do this one more time. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, I should have just went for Stone Edge. I don't have time. Go, 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 go. Kill, 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 kill. No, 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 no. No, 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 hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Go, 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 go,